Hello class, this is Miss Augustine. We are in chapter 18, so this is chapter 18, part two, and we are going to talk about the calculation of the equilibrium expression, the KEQ, and we're going to use values for the equilibrium concentrations of reactants and products. So KEQ from equilibrium concentration. Example, sulfur trioxide is placed in a reaction container heated to 130 degrees C and allowed to reach a state of equilibrium. So here we see two sulfur trioxides uh, form two sulfur dioxides and oxygen, and everything is in the gas phase and it reaches equilibrium. The equilibrium concentrations are determined to be, here's sulfur dioxide, here's oxygen, and here is the sulfur trioxide concentration. Notice they're all expressed as molarity. Write the equilibrium constant expression. Calculate the value of the equilibrium constant at this temperature, which is 130 degrees C. Again, changing temperature, everything would be changed. And describe the position of the equilibrium. Is it favoring forward? Is it favoring reverse? Or is it favoring neither? So solution. Here is our reaction. The equilibrium constant expression would look like this. The KEQ is going to be the product, so sulfur dioxide raised to the second power, coefficient is 2, oxygen raised to an understood power of 1, and sulfur trioxide raised to the power of 2. Now we're going to plug in our numbers. So we are going to plug in the numbers that we were given using the expression. So here are the values that I took from uh, the previous slide um, for each of them. So the sulfur dioxide squared, the oxygen, and the um, sulfur trioxide squared. So when we plug all of that in, we get the value of KEQ of 6.1 times 10 to the minus 4. This is a number that is much less than 1. Obviously, 10 to the minus 4 is well below 1. That would mean that the sulfur trioxide is favored. So the position of the equilibrium, that being a number that is much less than 1, the concentration of the products is small, the concentration of the reactants is greater, therefore the position of this equilibrium lies to the left, favoring the concentration of the reactants. The reaction is reactant favored at this temperature. So now we have to talk about heterogeneous equilibrium. I pointed out as we were doing the previous problem that everything in that reaction sequence was in the gas phase. That would be a homogeneous equilibrium expression. What about heterogeneous equilibria? And that would be where everything is not in the same phase of matter. You could have gas and liquid or gas and solid. So we have to consider that. So in a homogeneous equilibrium, it's um, an equilibrium in which the reactants and products are all in the same physical state. Here, they're all gas phase. Heterogeneous is an equilibrium involving more than one physical state. So for instance, bromine liquid at equilibrium with bromine in the gas phase. So the next slide is going to show you what that looks like. So if I have a closed container with bromine, which is a liquid at room temperature, Eventually, as long as the lid is closed, what happens is an equilibrium is reached. And it doesn't matter whether there is a drop of bromine liquid or whether there's a huge amount of bromine liquid. It will always reach equilibrium and the position of the equilibrium is not dependent on the amount of liquid bromine. As long as there is some liquid bromine present, it will reach equilibrium and that equilibrium con concentration will be the same. So the concentration of gaseous bromine at equilibrium is the same no matter how much liquid bromine you start with, as long as there's enough to go into uh, the gas phase and fill the container. Changing the amount of liquid bromine will not change the amount of gaseous bromine that forms at equilibrium. So by convention, chemists omit pure liquids and solids from the equilibrium constant expression for all equilibria. 
only gases, and dissolved substances, so they would have AQ next to them, are included in the equilibrium constant expression. Let's restate that. We do not include liquids or solids in the equilibrium expression. We only include gases or things that are dissolved, so like an AQ. So what does this mean for this next reaction? So we have calcium carbonate solid at equilibrium with calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So this is the decomposition of calcium carbonate. You'll notice this is heterogeneous, solid, solid gas. So what would be the equilibrium constant expression? This equilibrium constant expression would just be KEQ equals the concentration of carbon dioxide because only the gas would be included in this expression. So the concentration of carbon dioxide is independent of the amounts of calcium carbonate and calcium oxide as long as all three components are present. What about dissolved substances? So here I have barium fluoride and it uh, goes into solution and gives me barium ion and two fluoride ions. These guys are aqueous. This is a solid. The solid is not included in the expression. The KEQ 1.7 times 10 to the minus 6, um, that's the value of the KEQ. The equilibrium constant expression would look like this. KEQ is equal to the concentration of barium um, times the concentration of fluoride ion raised to the second power. Again, there's a coefficient of 2 there. Example, write the equilibrium constant expressions for each of the following reactions. So carbon in the solid uh, state plus uh, water in the gas phase produces carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. And hydrogen carbonate, aqueous, or carbonic acid, however you want to call it, uh, decomposes to form carbon dioxide and water. So in the first case, for this reaction, my KEQ is going to be the concentration of carbon monoxide divided by or multiplied by the concentration of hydrogen divided by water because water is in the gas phase. Carbon is not a part of this expression because it is solid. And in the case of carbonic acid, um, decomposing to produce carbon dioxide and water, our expression KEQ would be the concentration of carbon dioxide over the concentration of carbonic acid. Notice water in its liquid state is not included in this expression. Your turn. Write the equilibrium constant expressions for each of the following. So magnesium plus carbon dioxide to produce magnesium oxide and carbon monoxide and lead chloride decomposing to form lead and chloride. So um, I could let you do this, but I'm going to say that I'm going to solve it for you. So give me a moment. So what I'm going to suggest is that maybe you pause the video here for a second and I'll play the Jeopardy music. Do, 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 do. Just kidding. So now I'm going to move forward and I'm going to show you how these would look. So in the first case, if we look at this reaction, we know that magnesium solid can't be part of our expression and magnesium oxide also can't be part of our expression. So our KEQ should be the concentration of carbon monoxide divided by the concentration of carbon dioxide. And there it is. So again, the solids cannot be included in our expression. And for the second reaction, so this is aqueous, this is aqueous, this is aqueous. So that means our KEQ should be the concentration of lead ion times the concentration of chloride ion squared divided by the concentration of lead to chloride. And there it is. So again, reactants are on in the denominator, um, products are in the numerator, and we raise the concentrations to the power of the coefficient in our balanced chemical equation. So that's it for now. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.